Hey, welcome back to a new video. How are you all doing? Hope you're well. So as you know, living in a van, there's always something to do. And uh, this week, we're going to be covering in the back here. So we're going to put uh, the same fabric that we've got on the seats. We've got loads of material left over, so we're going to make a backing for this for a cover so it'll be better for the gas canister as well. But we need it to be able to get in there so that we can turn the gas off when we're driving. And then we're also going to make a curtain for the back of these seats here so that um, we can obviously just pull it over in the day if we want to get changed or we need to go to the toilet or something or it, we might even use it at night. We'll just see how it actually looks when we actually do it. The first task is to measure up so that we know how big to cut the fabric. <laughs> fabric that we used for the seating as you can see but we've got loads of it left over so we might as well use that instead of wasting it on buying some new fabric just got to make out a template now i'm going to make it about a centimeter bigger than i actually measured it out to be because i'm going to overlock the side as this fabric tends to fray really easily so i'm going to get my mom to quickly overlock that for me because i've never used an overlock before yeah, I'll be now but we still need to overlock the sides but before we do that we just thought I'd quickly just double check that it actually does fit and I haven't cut it too small What's it like? yeah, it's fine, isn't it? it's a little yeah it will bit. have a bit off anyway because when you overlock it you do obviously take a bit of the edge off so that's perfectly fine yeah I quite like the look of it as well yeah, a quick sneak peek obviously it's gonna be blowing and stuff at the minute but that's roughly what it will look like it looks all right. Now let's go finish it off. So I've quickly just measured up the curtain, but I didn't think you'd want to see me measuring that up. So uh, if we've got it out to 155 centimetres wide. We've added 10 centimetres on, just so that it would have a bit of ruffle and it's not too tight. And it'll be 55 centimetres deep. It comes down to about, I don't know, we can see a bit about here. So it's not too long, but um, it needs to be able to store over here because it's where it's going to store in the day when we're driving. <laughs> Alright, we've managed to get the back cover up and sorted and what we've done, if Tabitha comes in a bit closer we've put some velcro at the bottom and we've stitched it on we need to trim that down once it's actually set though we need to get some scissors and trim that down that secures the bottom bit on and then halfway up as well we've got the same thing again but as you can see, look, it's not stuck there um, but I have put a screw in because we know this velcro is a nightmare as you can see, it's already causing us troubles but I have put a screw in there to make sure it stays in, uh, even if the glue don't hold it. And then at the top, I've just got two screws, one in either corner. Um, but yeah, that secures it all nicely, and it just tidies it up a bit. I don't think it looks the best. Um, I'm not 100% pleased with it, but at least it looks better than just having all that, the bottle and all the rubbish that we stored in that cupboard like on display. So it definitely tidies it up, but um, we might end up coming with another solution in a few months or whenever. But for the time being, that'll do. We've just finished putting the curtain up. It was a bit of a nightmare getting this string to be the right size. But eventually got it through and then we had to thread the curtain, well, the string through the curtain. But we're not too sure what we think about it at the minute. It's a bit of a nightmare and it's we didn't think it would be so bunchy up. We thought we'd be able to use a piece of string or fabric that we'd made to tie it to this wall so it'd be kind of out of the way in the day. But that's not the case. Um, so we're not really too sure if we're actually going to keep this idea, we might scrap it all together. Well we've had the curtain up now a few days, uh, we're definitely not going to be keeping it up. We'll show you a reason why later. Um, basically you can see straight through it and it's quite funny. Um, so we'll show you later what we're on about there. But it's up at the minute, behind me, as you can see. We're just about to drive out because we need to get some new frying pan, well we need to get a new frying pan and two new saucepans. The ones that we've got, we had them when we was um, in living in the flat. But now we've moved into the van, the cooker's a bit smaller. Um, so we, de we need to basically downsize and upgrade as well because the frying pan is too big for the van for starters and it's starting to lose its non-stick as well. So we need to get a new one there. And the two frying, uh, two saucepans, sorry, that we've already got, Tab have had them back when she was in university um, and they're just cheap Wilco's ones. So they're not good at all. And especially cooking on gas. On electric, you could kind of get away with it because you could turn it down to like a really low heat and they wouldn't really burn that much. 
but on uh, this gas gas cooker specifically they they burn really quick so we need to get um some new ones we're gonna get some nice ones we'll show you later what we've got but um i'll quickly quick like i'll quickly show you why we actually need them um and why you might obviously consider downsizing your like saucepans and frying pans especially frying pan as well because most people have a big frying pan um let me show you anyway and stop speaking <laughs> so this is the issue that we've got is if we've got the normal size saucepan on there the frying pan's way too big if i show you underneath like look how much that overhangs you can't use that at all so uh yeah we need to get a smaller one of this but this is like a 30 centimeter one we're downsizing to i think 22 i think the size we're going to get um, same as these saucepans. The saucepans are going to be the exact same size because they fit nicely on the cooker. And if you've got a smaller sauce, uh, frying pan, you can be able to have your saucepan and frying pan next to each other, which obviously is uh, quite important if you if you're cooking for two people. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to be replacing these today. Um, so we'll take you along. I spent quite a while actually looking for the right saucepans and frying pans to get um, because obviously we we're in such a small space. We didn't want something that was going to take up too much room, and we need to make sure they fit in the cupboard the exact way that they already fit in because they fit in snug at the minute, um, but obviously we don't want to get a bigger frying pan or bigger saucepans and then them not fit in and then be struggling to find space for them and kind of waste money. So we looked at a few different options. The uh, really good one that looked like, well, it looked like a really good one was the, I think they're called T-Fowl um, Ingenious, I think they're called the range. They're, they basically like all fold into each other and they have like removable handles and stuff. And when we seen them, we thought that was perfect. Obviously living in such a small space, if they all collapse down into each other and the handle removes, that means you can store them a lot easier. But um, the reviews ain't that good on them, and they seem hard to get hold of, especially because we only want two saucepans and a frying pan. They seem to be coming like big sets, which obviously we don't want. We're in a little tiny space. The only two of us, we don't need a lot of pans. So we didn't get them. Um, and Hannah's, uh, Tabitha's sister, sorry, Hannah, she's just bought some new ones for uh, ProCook, the brand, and they look really good. The reviews are really good on them, um, and the place where she got them from are not far from here, and they've got them in stock as well. So I think we're going to go and pick them ones up. We'll show you when we got them, though. So back now from getting the pans that we were going to get and um, we eventually went with the pro cook elite tri-ply pans they're definitely not cheap for uh three pans i think it costs about 140 pounds so definitely not cheap but they they've got 25 years uh warranty on them so they should last us a long long time and we should definitely get the money out of them because the, the frying pan we had before was a vogue and i think that was about 20 odd pound um and that, they usually lasted us about a year so if the, if the frying pan in, in this set was £50 or £49, so as long as it lasts us like two years, then it's kind of worked out the same sort of value. Um, and I think it'll last us a lot longer than that, but as long as it lasts us two years, we'll be happy with it. I'll show you them all now. Um, the only issue is, or the, un the only uncertainty is, we think they will fit in the cupboard, but we haven't actually test fitted them. Like I said earlier, Tabitha's sisters bought similar sort of pans. They're not the exact ones. These are a little bit taller. We test fitted her ones in the cupboard and they fit comfortably, so these should fit, but we don't actually know that. So I'll show you them and then you can see, as long as we'll see at the same time, if they actually fit or not. Now it's just trying to actually get it out of the box. So this is the, uh, what is it, saucepan and lid, 18 centimetre. 18, yeah, 18 centimetre? Yeah, 18 centimetre. It's 2.8 litres, this one is. So this, this one's mainly for like pastas, and we'll use it for the curries and stuff like that because we was contemplating getting uh the 16 centimeter and the 14 centimeter but the trouble with the 14 centimeter was we'd mainly be using the 16 and if we wanted pasta or something we won't be able to do that in the 14 centimeter one we could do rice in it but not pasta there's the actual pan so it's nice solid has a lot of weight to it real solid sound as well um, so I think I can't remember the exact material, but it's like it's three different materials. That's why they're called triply, but fits on the hove uh, on the hove, fits on the stove nicely. That's on obviously on a smaller ring, and on the bigger ring, it fits just as well. Um, here's the lid. The only downside to these uh, pans, especially being in a van, was the fact that the lids, um, the handle was quite nice, but the actual lids, that when you put them on it, on the thing, usually you'd store well at least we would, we'd store our lids like this. So we'd put them this upside down inside the pan and then store the other pan on top of it to go in the cupboard. Uh, but as you can see, look, it slides around. So that might be an issue, but from what we looked at, 
all the good pans that we was looking at, none of them like sat inside the actual like the rim of the, the saucepan. So we was going to have this issue with all of them. Um, yeah, so it's kind of seems like a common issue, but pans lids just a lid in it. But the actual pan, hopefully, we don't get things sticking on this. Um, and these should definitely last us because there's no non-stick on the inside. Um, the frying pan does have non-stick uh, material on the inside. This one doesn't, so this should definitely last us five ten years easily I reckon but yeah that's the first pan out of the way so the second pan is in just some paper this one was off the shelf that one was out, out from the back makes it a bit easier to get into <laughs> again same lid nothing fancy there That's this pan, same obviously the exact same style as the other one, just smaller. So if I hold them together, you can see, oh, you can see the size difference. They're a bit smaller. And this is the main thing, which we'll probably be using the most, I imagine, the frying pan. Now, this is a small frying pan, especially because we're coming down from a 20, uh, sorry, from a 30 centimetre. This is a 22 centimetre. So this is going to be interesting because we'd like to cook paellas and stuff. Um, and this does look like a small pan for a paella but there's only two of us and we've been like cutting our portion sizes down a little bit since we've been in the van so it shouldn't be too much of an issue oh. Just try that. so that's the actual saucepan as you can see in the inside as the non-stick um it's the ptfe free i think it's called so it doesn't have like the hazardous chemicals in it and stuff like that um yeah again proper solid fits on the stove nicely and it means we'll be able to have like if I put that on the big one for my sake and then put the little one on it means we'll be able to have two pans together rather than having to uh, do them separately which is a nightmare let's just see if we can fit the big pan probably do it this way around if we was doing that yeah look comfortably fits even the big saucepan and the frying pan together which means we can obviously do a lot of different things now rather than having to do them separately which was just a nightmare because obviously if you're cooking you don't have to use like cook them at different times you don't have to like be swapping pans over just because you haven't got the room um that was one of the things we noticed straight away with this hob was the fact that like the rings are really close together compared to like in a household when they're spread out um so this is hopefully solve that situation um obviously we ain't used them yet we just need to go go and clean them and stuff before we use them uh we, it's quite late tonight and we got back not too late but we've ended up uh, watching some TV in top of his mum, so it's a bit later than we wanted to be in the van actually recording this. So uh, we just had some snacks and stuff. So I don't think we'll be cooking with it tonight, but I think we might do some pancakes in the morning and see what it's like. What do you think, T? Yep, I like that idea. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is uh, what you was expecting to see in a van life video, but I love cooking, and this was an issue that we had with our van. And I see a lot of people have this uh, hob top, so you might have some sort of similar issue with like the size in the pans and stuff. And this is the solution I found to it, um, or at least I think I found to it. We obviously with the proof of being the pudding when we're actually testing it and stuff. But it hopefully it helped you out a little bit, especially if you're in the market for like a good set of pans. The reviews on these seem great. Um, obviously, in the upcoming videos, you'll I'll speak about them, how I think they are and how they're performing and stuff. Because um, if they're crap, then I've just wasted 140 quid. <laughs> but they shouldn't be. The reviews seem good in that lot. They fit on the hob fine. Now we just actually need to check to make sure they fit in the cupboard. So this was the oh. <laughs> <laughs> So this this was the old pan. If you if I tap the bottom of it, you can tell the difference in quality. Very like hollow sounding. And then this is the exact same size. Uh not in depth though. Same size of uh, in, in diameter. So the sound is a lot different. Um anyway, let's actually check and see if they fit. The, the, the actual size difference is quite a lot in height. Look, if I hold them about level, I don't know if you can see. Oh, that's probably about level in it, somewhere around there? Yeah, somewhere around there. But yeah, it's definitely a fair bit taller. See, that's the issue. You see that, it just slid off. That might be an issue, but we'll give it a crack. That's one in, at least one fits. <laughs> the same with that one. Yeah, they're fitting easily. Yeah, they've got like that much room at the top, which is great because we wanted obviously to store the actual frying pan in there as well. So that just kind of goes in. 
that fit in comfortably. Uh, it's no, mm, I don't know if I'd put that in there to be honest. I don't know if I'd probably put that in there. I might not. Let me just have a little wiggle around. Yeah, I think it'd be all right after you've put other things in. So obviously this goes in there as well. So we shove that in. And then shove the steamer on top. That kind of helps it actually hold in. I just want to check, make sure everything fits back in. And it will do easily. There's loads of room in there. Yeah. Spot on. At least, at least they fit now. We can actually use them and have some decent pans when we're cooking. So hopefully I'll be making a lot more recipes now as well. So what do you all think to my new van decoration? It looks like a pair of dangly balls. So sorry about the noise in the image and the actual fan noise as well, but obviously it's dark in here. I just wanted to quickly like show you what we're, while we're not having the uh, this curtain like actually up in the van the whole time. So obviously this side looks perfectly fine. Obviously you've got the gap at the top, but that don't really matter. Um, it looks like you can't see through it and stuff, but if I go outside the van and show you looking back in, um, you'll see what the actual main issue is. So let me go do that now. You can clearly see Tabitha's outline on the outside of her there. So, and when you stand up and stuff with your actual eyes, you can see quite a lot of details. So if you're getting changed or something, yeah, it'd, be, it'd basically be pointless having it there. Um, so yeah, we're definitely not keeping that up. Good morning. Since we didn't actually get to test out the pan last night, we decided that we'd have pancakes for breakfast so we could actually test it out. The recipe suggests that you use plain flour, but we only have self-raising flour. I've done it before like this, and it just makes them extra fluffy. I'm also using normal sugar instead of caster sugar. Uh, I've not noticed any different. You can't taste the sugar or anything, so just using this. Perfect way to start your day. Definitely, I agree with you. Mm. Right, so I think we're going to end the video there. Hopefully, you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one.